This guide is going to look at giving you a better understanding of how to play Sea of Thieves. The game's tutorial does a great job of explaining the basics of interaction, how to start sailing and fire cannons. However, it does not really cover the goal, factions, mission, sailing in the wind and combat in the game. First off, we're going to cover the main goal of the game. And this is quite open as there's lots of things to do. Primarily though, it's about finding loot through the different missions and events that are available or by stealing it from other players. You take this loot back to the different outposts or specific locations to sell it. Doing so, you will gain different in-game currencies and with that, buy different cosmetics to deck out your character and ship. There are also a whole host of achievements and titles you can unlock by doing various missions and actions, some of which will see you grinding out the most difficult events and missions for the various factions in the game, and others will see you stealing loot from other players. So let's talk about the factions. When you spawn into the world, you will be on an outpost with different NPCs that you can interact with. There are three core factions, two advanced factions, and three side factions you can sell loot to. You are also able to buy cosmetics and missions from these factions, as well as supplies from some of them. These factions Factions are important to know as different loot can only be sold to specific factions. First we have the Gold Hoarders, which is located in what looks like a small tent. This faction takes small trinkets and chests. The Gold Hoarders normally focus on missions that involve finding hidden treasure. These missions can be bought from the Gold Hoarder and put down on your captain's table located on your ship to get access to the maps that contain the hidden loot. Next is the Order of Souls. This is usually located in a larger two-story building at the bottom of the building. Their missions focus on killing skeleton NPCs and they primarily take all the skulls you find in the game. Finally, for the core factions, we have the Merchant Alliance. This faction focuses on rectangular trade crates found from shipwrecks and other locations. Their missions focus on delivering goods to specific outposts in the game. As a special mention, you will find mermaid gems and siren hearts in the game. All of these can be sold to any of the core factions. With each of these factions, as you progress, you can unlock a special flag called an emissary. You will need to buy the license from each faction in order to get access to this. Once you have the emissary license, there is a small table next to each of these factions that you can vote on to raise or lower an emissary flag. When you have this flag flying and pick up treasure, put it down on your ship, and complete missions for the specific factions, you will increase your emissary rating and in doing so, get a bonus to selling loot to that faction. This bonus increases depending on your emissary level, with the max level of five offering up to 1.5 times the base value as a bonus when you're selling to that faction. Next, we have the advanced factions, the Reaper's Bones and Athena's. The Athenas can only be accessed when you become a pirate legend. However, all you need to know at this stage is the mysterious stranger at the back of the tavern is the person that you sell all your Athenas loot to should you come across any on your journeys. Next, we have the Reaper's Bone faction. This is primarily a PvP faction that has a special bonus to sinking other ships flying emissary flags, with a level five flag being the most valuable. They have no specific missions and there is only one location in the center of the map called Reaper's Hideout that you can sell loot to. However, they take all types of loot from every faction. In addition, on the map at random intervals, the red and gold Reaper chests can spawn on the map. These will either give you gold or doubloons. However, they can only be sold at the Reaper's Hideout. So do expect players to come looking for a fight if you have one of these chests on board or you yourself are flying a Reaper's Emissary flag. The Reaper's Bones Emissary can be raised at islands by finding the small table with a skeleton cage above it. And again, you need an Emissary license which can be bought from the Reaper's hideout. Doing missions or selling loot for each specific faction will also increase your reputation. This is important to unlock special titles and cosmetics. And in the case of the Athena's faction, you will need a reputation of level 50 with the core three factions before being able to access missions for this faction, as well as the secret location under the tavern at an outpost. Do note that all their items can be chests, small items, crates or skulls. 
On to the final three factions. The first is the Bilge Rats. These will give you Athena's quests, but mostly focus on accepting loot that gives you the currency doubloons. If you find Ashen objects in the game, you will need to sell them to the Bilge Rats faction, which is located just outside the entrance to the tavern you spawn into at any outpost. Once a month, you are also able to trade doubloons for reputation boosts, and at any time, you can trade in doubloons for gold coin. Next, we have the Hunter's Call faction. This can currently only be found at small sea outposts dotted around the map. This faction focuses on fishing and hunting monsters of the sea. So every time you kill a shark, megalodon, kraken, or just go fishing in the open sea, you can cook and sell your fish for a small reward and reputation with that faction. As a notable mention, this faction will also take mermaid gems, siren hearts, and treasure chests. The final faction is new with Season 7, the Sovereigns. These are not actually a faction that you can grind experience with. Instead, this faction will take all the treasure you have gained, much like the Reaper's Bones. These will be available at every outpost and are easily found as they have a large tower that is clearly marked. This is currently the most efficient way of selling loot in the game. However, as they only deal with captains, if you're brand new to the game, you will need to grind money out first with the other factions before gaining access to them. Next, we're going to cover sailing in the game. There are other guides out there that explain sailing in Sea of Thieves much better than I do. However, here are the basics you need to know. The sloop is a two-person crew with one sail, the brigantine a three-person crew with two sails, and the galley a four-person crew with three sails. Sails give you acceleration, and if you correctly angle them to the wind, this means that you will go extra fast. And the more sails you have aligned to catch the wind, the faster you will go. You will need to look up to see which direction the wind is coming from. Then modify the sail's angle from the rope with the round pulley located on it. If you can't see the wind clearly, you can put up a non-PVP flag and look to the top of the ship to see which direction the wind is coming from. When you have the wind in your sails, the galleon will be the fastest, followed by the brigantine, and then the sloop, meaning the galleon downwind can chase down other ships easily. However, with the wind against you, the opposite is true. Flying your sail directly into the wind means the sloop is the fastest, followed by the brigantine, and lastly, the galleon. So you can use this to your advantage when chasing down or running away from other ships. Next, we're going to talk about supplies, which are arguably is one of the most important topics in the game. When you start out on your adventure, you'll have a ship that has three core types of supplies. These are food, cannonballs, and wood. There are multiple variations of food and cannibals, but wood is just wood. Your starter island will have lots of barrels and crates with various supplies. There is a maximum you can carry of each supply, so bringing them all back to your ship can be very tedious. However, from the Merchant Alliance faction, you can purchase a storage crate or some of the other pre-filled crates. With Season 7, there's also an easy way to stock your ship up. If you are a captain or on a captain's ship, head over to the shipwright and you will be able to purchase a whole assortment of supplies to get you on your way. If you start off and see a skeleton sloop near your island, take this down and in the loot pile, you will get a storage crate. As you travel around, each island you visit will have more barrels that you can loot from and you will gain supplies as you go. Just be sure to always loot as much as you can to bring it back to your ship. Each ship has three supply barrels that are located in different locations for each ship. Food and wood barrels are light tan in color and have the food and wood logos on respectively. Whereas the cannon barrels are a red and white logo that is clearly different from anything else in the game. If you are on a new ship, I highly recommend finding where those new barrels are located as they are the lifeline to keeping your ship afloat. However, one of the best places to go to do a decent supply run free of charge is one of the Phantom Forts located throughout the map. These have hundreds of cannonballs, advanced food, plenty of wood, and even some loot, all of which will definitely set you up 
for a longer play session in the game. On these forts as well, there are four cooking pans that will allow you to cook meat and fish that are the advanced food types in the game. Once you have all the advanced food types in the game, be sure to hit the like button on this video to flex on your hunter's call reputation. Next, we're going to be talking about fighting. Essentially, for fighting, we have ship combat and player combat. So let's cover ship combat first. To sink an enemy ship, you will need to put holes in it. And this is done by firing cannonballs into them. The lower front of all ships should be prioritized first as these areas can create the biggest holes that flood the ship as fast as possible. The upper back are the smallest holes, which will also flood the slowest. For the galleon, there are actually two lower decks, which you will need to flood. Aim low first to fill the lower deck, then aim up when you see the ship sailing lower in the water. When firing cannons, hitting the same spot over and over does work, but to sink a ship faster, you will want to move your shots from front to back. This creates the most holes possible. This tactic also applies to your ship as well. And to counter this, you will need to bucket water and repair the holes that you have received. When engaged in combat, the most dangerous situation is when your ship is sitting stationary. This is because it's easy for players to board the ship and fire cannon shots at you. As such, other players will try to board your ship to lower your anchor or hit you with chain shot that will take down your sails, leaving you dead in the water. Currently, when attacking the sloop, you will need two chain shots to take down their mast. However, every other ship type only requires one. So you will want to use your own chain shots to either immobilize or slow down your enemies. To access this whilst on the cannon, hold down the Q button to open the radial menu and switch to the chain shot cannonball variant. On an Xbox controller, this will be the LB button. Everything you fire out of a cannon has a different weight system attached to it. And for the chain shots, you will need to aim very high to hit the enemy's mast. Next, we're going to talk about throwables. These are fire bombs and blunder bombs. Whilst these can be thrown by a player, which we'll discuss in a second, you can also fire them out of a cannon. Fire bombs are great for creating pressure as the fire will slowly damage the enemy crew and make it difficult for them to see. Blunder bombs are great to stop repairs and actions. This includes planks to patch holes, raising the anchor, raising a broken mast, and reviving a player. However, neither of these will cause any real damage to a ship during a fight and should only be used after the regular cannonballs. Fire bombs can create holes in ships, but the time it takes to do so is very long. Next, we're going to look at special cannonballs. As you explore through the world, you will encounter special cannonballs. These will either be green or purple. Rather than go through each one, the tooltip when hovering explains what each one does. And all of them are pretty good, so make sure to use them when fighting other players to definitely get an advantage. If you're new to the game, I would recommend going to a phantom fortress, loot the hundreds of cannonballs, and then circle around the fortress, practicing with the cannons to get a better feel of the waiting system. As a special mention for this section, there is also the gunpowder keg. This is a red explosive barrel that is most commonly found on skeleton forts, but can also spawn at other locations like the Phantom Fort. You can pick this item up, light it with a left click, drop it, and after a short delay, it will explode doing a massive amount of damage. You can, if you're quick, pick up a gunpowder keg and with the right click, diffuse it. With an Xbox controller, the diffuse button should be the left trigger. This item can be dropped onto an enemy deck to do massive amount of hull damage and kill anyone in its blast radius. Next, we're going to look at player combat you will be engaging in player combat at some point. The Sea of Thieves is primarily a player versus player game. With a sword, you can dash, swipe, or block attacks, which is great when dealing with NPCs, also as a good follow-up to kill players. The pistol is short to medium range with a fast reload time. The sniper is great long range, but with a slower reload time. And the blunderbuss, which is only good at short range with a medium reload time. However, notably on this one, at point blank range, you can one-shot players, which is very useful in PvP. You also have the Fire Bomb and Blunder Bombs. The Fire Bomb sets a player on fire and does a small amount of damage over time. And the Blunder Bomb does a small amount of damage up front. The Blunder Bomb, as mentioned before, can 
can also cancel a player's action, like repairing or resurrecting. But if you're lucky, you can also potentially knock a player off a ship. Close quarter combat is usually required after you have anchored or destroyed the sails of a ship, as an enemy crew who is well supplied can keep repairing and bucketing water out of their ship. However, they cannot do this when they are dead. As a final mention for the fighting section, running away from a fight is a valid tactic. Do not feel you need to fight every engagement. However, do take advantages when you can. Next, we're going to talk about events. Beyond the missions you get from the different factions, there are some random events that will get you some loot and world events that will get you some of the best loot in the game. Starting off, let's look at the random events. The main three are skeleton ships, a megalodon, or a kraken. The skeleton ships can either spawn as a sloop or a galleon. As you are sailing, music will begin to play and after a short time, a ship will spawn on your left or right. You will need to cannonball this ship until it sinks. For the galleons, again, aim low, then high to sink them faster. These ships can be boarded to stop the skeletons shooting cannons at you or to stop them repairing the holes that you make. As a note, the skeletons will not bucket water out of their ship, but they will repair the holes you make, stopping any water sinking them. Once sunk, skeleton sloops drop some loot, but the galleons drop considerably more. The next event is a megalodon, which is a huge shark. Again, music will play and it will most likely appear at the back of your ship. It will circle around you and at intervals ram your ship to cause massive hull breaches. You will need to fire cannonballs at it until it dies. And on death, it drops loot and megalodon meat, which is one of the best foods in the game. Finally, we have the Kraken, which will play music, stop your ship, and turn all the water around you to pitch black. It will then spawn tentacles all around your ship, which will either attack you or try to suck up a member of your crew into its tentacle. To kill this, you will need to shoot cannonballs at the tentacles. This is until it either dies or stops attacking you. Once the fight is over, you will need to sail to the different birds circling above nearby. Here, you'll find some small loot and the other best food in the game, Kraken meat. In addition to the random events you come across, shipwrecks will also spawn throughout the map. Look out for the birds circling in the sky as these will either be supply barrels or a shipwreck underneath. Shipwrecks contain loot and plenty of supplies. Finally, we have a special mention, the Siren Shrines. These are dotted around the map in different locations. Each of these is a special event that will see you either fight, solve puzzles, or explore the underwater kingdoms for unique loot and siren staves. However, be warned, as these events take some time to do, you are leaving your ship exposed in the middle of the ocean for all to see. Next, we have world events. These can all be seen in the sky and are clearly visible from a huge distance distance away. These get triggered by the game at set intervals, with the more valuable ones only spawning every four to five hours. We have the skeleton forts, which will spawn a greenish looking skull above one of the skeleton forts throughout the map. The next is an armada, which is a galleon located in the center of the map. We have the Ashen Winds Captain, which is a swirling red vortex. And we have the Fort of Fortune, which is a red skull with three cracks at the top of the skull. Again, this can spawn at one of the skeleton forts randomly. The value of loot gained and the risk reward is also based on that order, meaning the Fort of Fortune is one of the most contested events. Finally, there are also two player initiated events that are also high risk, high reward. First, we have the Ashens of the Veil vale mission. This is only available to pirate legends, but you do not need to be a pirate legend to steal the loot from another player. You will see this as the last part of the mission will spawn a pancake looking cloud in the sky, which has a swirling vortex underneath it. At this location, there is a mega fort and upon completion, players will be rewarded with lots of Athena loot. The last event is the Fort of the Damned, which will have a huge reddish skull with glowing red eyes and a long jaw. This will only spawn at the location called Fort of the Damned. This has the best collection of loot in the game and almost guarantees there will be people looking to steal the loot. If you'd like to see some recommendations on completing these different events, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully that gives you a good overview of starting out in the game with the events, fighting and general gameplay that will help you on your way in the Sea of Thieves. I do guides for other games as well, so be sure to click on one of these to see more. Chuck a like and subscribe as it helps me make more content and until next time, peace.
Before the outro video, I want to give a huge shout out to all my supporters, especially the ones on Patreon. You mean the world to me and allow me to keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you. No, no, no.